The Acura Integra is one of the most important vehicles in the brand's history. Now, a lot of you may be surprised to learn this, but Acura was the first Japanese automotive luxury brand when it made its debut in North America in 1986. It launched with two vehicles, including the Legend and the Integra. And it was the success of those two vehicles that inspired Toyota to launch its own luxury brand, Lexus, and Nissan followed up with Infiniti. And before you get all excited with your comments about how this is just a fancier Honda Civic, well, yeah, that's the way it's always been. All the way back since 1986. My name is Omar and this is the 2023 Acura Integra. So yeah, I don't know what a lot of you out there were expecting. Maybe you were hoping that the Integra becomes a competitor to the likes of the BMW M240i or even the Audi S3. I mean, that would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? And I get it, in a world where we have the new Toyota Supra and the new Nissan Z, both of which are true and awesome sports cars, the return of the Integra in the form of a Honda Civic Si may seem a bit lackluster. But rumor has it that there is an Integra S or an Integra R on the way, and it will be based on the new Civic Type R and Acura. Please, I'm begging you, do it for the sake of the Integra name. I'm sure they will. I mean, they've even done the Type S MDX, so why not the Integra? Until then, let's meet the 2023 Acura Integra. Yes, it's a fancied up Honda Civic Si, but Acura is quick to point out that even though these were developed side by side, the Integra doesn't share any of the body panels with the new Civic. But as soon as you sit inside, you'll notice that it shares a lot of the interior with the new Civic. So is the new Integra worth the extra $3,300 over the Civic Si? And is it worth buying over other entry-level luxury sedans? Let's find out. But first, let me give you a quick tour of the new Integra. We'll take a look at the outside, we'll check out the inside, and then I'll give you my opinion on whether or not if you should buy this over the Civic Si or other entry-level luxury sedans. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. All right, so let's get into it. Yes, the new Integra is based on the Civic Si, but there are two major differences between both. While the Civic Si is exclusively offered with a six-speed manual, the Integra can be had with either a six-speed manual or what Acura calls a sport-tuned CVT automatic. So if you want a Civic Si but don't know how to drive a manual, you'll have to go for the Integra and the extra $3,300 price jump might be worth it for you. But if you like to go through your own gears, you can go for the manual transmission, but keep in mind it's only available on the top of the line A-spec with the tech package trim. The second major difference is that while the Civic Si is based on the Civic sedan, you can't get it as a Civic hatchback. The Integra, on the other hand, is exclusively offered as a hatchback or a sportback or whatever you want to call it. And that's the reason that Acura says that the exterior of the Integra is totally different from the Civic Si and that no body panels were shared. Let's take a seat inside because while the interior is pretty much the same as the one you see on the Civic Si, there are some interesting differences. Now, when I reviewed the Civic Si a few months back, I pointed out how the Civic Si lacks a lot of the convenience and tech features that you get on the Civic Touring. For example, the Civic Si doesn't get heated seats, which you can get on other Civic trims. It also didn't have power adjustable front seats or a dual zone climate control. You only had a single zone climate control in the Civic Si. You also didn't have the awesome digital instrument cluster that you get on the Civic Touring and you didn't have a wireless charger. Well, guess what? The Acura Integra has all of that and more. Now, of course, you may be thinking, did Honda and Acura purposely keep those things out of the Civic Si for the sake of the new Integra? Maybe or maybe not. I'm going to lean towards yes. Because what's interesting is that the Canadian Civic Si gets all of those things and they also are getting the new Integra. So I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. That said, let's take a closer look at the interior of the new Integra. Starting with the tech, you have a 10.2 inch digital gauge cluster display, which is standard. Acura calls this the precision cockpit, but it moves and behaves very similar to the one you find in the new Civic Touring. It doesn't have a full screen map view, but it does have a lot of useful information and it changes colors slightly when you pop it in different drive modes. And like the Honda Civic, the Acura here also has a tiny Integra that will mimic your lights in real time. I like that a lot. Of course, the Integra also has your cool Acura startup and stop animations. Moving to the center, you have a nine inch touchscreen display here on the A-Spec technology package. If you go for the base Integra or the Integra A-Spec, 
Without the tech package, you'll get a 7-inch touchscreen display, which again is funny because the Civic Si comes standard with the 9-inch touchscreen display. Other than that, this system is very similar to the one on the new Civic. However, it's worth pointing out that if you get the 7-inch touchscreen display, you only get wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you go for the A-Spec with the tech package, that's where you'll get wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. So yeah, I'm sure by now you can tell that the A-Spec with the tech package is the nicely loaded Integra with all the bells and whistles. If you go for that, you'll get a wireless charging pad right here. The other two Integra models don't get it. You'll also get a 16 speaker ELS studio sound system, which sounds awesome. And 16 speakers in a compact sedan is pretty impressive. And you'll get an extra drive mode. Now all Integras get comfort, normal and sport, but the A-Spec with the tech also gets an individual mode where you can go in and configure settings for the engine, steering, suspension, idle start, stop, and your gauges. Now, I will say that the interior does feel slightly more premium than the one on the top of the line Civic. I mean, they have to make it a little bit more luxurious since this is an Acura. First of all, these seats are very, very comfortable. This is synthetic leather and the A-Spec with the tech package gets a mixture of that and micro suede. And then if you look at the dash, you'll notice that Acura has gotten rid of that giant honeycomb pattern that spans the width of the dash on the Civic. You still have it, but it's only regulated to the vents, which is funny because I can just imagine them thinking we don't need a giant honeycomb trim in the Integra. This is luxury. All right, let's check out the space in the second row. Even though the Integra is about five inches longer than the Civic, you still have the same amount of legroom back here. You have 37.4 inches. I'm about six foot tall. That's my seating position, as you can see. Good amount of room. It is actually very, very comfortable back here. Let's check out the cargo capacity. You have a little cutout in the bumper to put your hand in to pop open the trunk, which is a callback to the Integras of the past. Once you get it opened, you have 24.3 cubic feet behind the second row, and then you have 60-40 split rear seats to open that up to much more. Now let's take a look at the outside of the new Integra, and I have to say that this looks very, very sharp. It definitely looks much better in person, and honestly, it looks a little bigger than the Civic, which it actually is by a total of five inches in length. Again, Acura is quick to note that every body panel on the Integra is different from the Civic. This definitely has a more upscale look, especially on the front. That's due to this frameless version of Acura's signature diamond pentagon grille. I like this look quite a bit. And I really like the design of these LED headlights. These are Acura's dual LED headlamps with what they call chicane daytime running lights. And these are standard on all Integra trims. And it says Acura, right inside if you look a little closely. Now, once you circle around the Integra, you'll notice that there's no Integra badging. There's no badging on the back, and that's because it's embedded right into the bumper, which is a shout out to the older Integras. You also have that same Integra badging embedded right here on the front bumper as well. But yeah, overall, I really like this design. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. All right, let's talk pricing really quick. Pricing starts at $30,800 for the base Integra and $32,800 for the Integra A-Spec, and the top of the line A-Spec with the tech package starts at $35,800. And as I've mentioned throughout this video, if you want all the bells and whistles and the six-speed manual transmission, you'll have to go for the A-Spec with the tech package. Also, interestingly enough, there is no upcharge for the manual transmission. Both the automatic and the manual Integra A-Spec with the tech cost exactly the same. But if you don't care for the manual transmission, all Integras still come pretty well equipped. Again, all of them get LED headlamps as standard. However, the two A-Spec trims add on fog lights. All of them also get these chicane stylish taillights. I really like the design of these taillights. I found them a little weird in the beginning, but now in full production, they look really cool. You get a power moonroof as standard, and then all Integras get a power adjustable driver's seat. However, only the A-Spec with the tech package gets a power adjustable passenger seat. Otherwise, it's a manual adjustable seat. I don't know why that is. Let's just make it power across the lineup. You get the very, very comfortable seats right here wrapped in synthetic leather. They are heated as standard, so that's pretty nice. And I think I saw somewhere that you can get a heated steering wheel as an accessory item through a dealership. So check into that if you want a heated steering wheel. Tech-wise, all of the Integra trims get their really cool digital instrument cluster and you get a seven inch touchscreen display on the base and the A-Spec and it gets upgraded to nine inches on the A-Spec with the tech. And then everything else, really like the wireless charger and the better sound system is available on the A-Spec with the tech package. Safety and driver assist tech-wise, all Integras come standard with Acura watch, so you get adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, collision mitigation, traffic sign recognition, you also get blind spot monitoring, and rear cross traffic alert. You only get a rear view camera, no 360 camera here, but obviously the A-Spec with the tech package has to one-up every other Integra trim with a heads-up display. 
Now, before I continue driving the new Integra, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I love to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front right there, and then you have two in the back located in this center armrest, which is also very, very soft. Here are what the keys look like to the new Integra, specifically the manual Integra, which has a shorter key. The automatic Integra has a longer key because it has space for a remote start button. But yeah, I like the fact that there's two different set of keys for each transmission. Door open and close sound from the outside. And from the inside. Solid. All right, so charging game wise, you have a wireless charger only if you go for the A spec with the tech package, and that will also give you a USB C port. I believe the USB C port is not available on the lower Integra trims, and then you also have a USB A port right there. And those hanging out in the second row get two USB A ports again, only if you get the A spec with the tech, otherwise, you don't have anything back here. Now let's do a quick indicator and horn sound test here on the 2023 Acura Integra indicator first. Same old Honda Acura indicator. Now for the horn sound, did Acura change the horn from the Civic Si? Let's take a listen. Oh yes, they did. Sounds much better than the one on the Civic. Man, I thought allergy season was bad in Jersey, but Austin, Texas, you have us beat by a long shot. All right, so let's take the new Integra for a drive, and I'm sure you're wondering if this drives like the Civic Si. Yes, it definitely does, and it's not a bad thing at all. I really enjoyed the week that I was driving the Civic Si. And you might call me crazy, but I had the Mercedes AMG GT53 four-door the same week that I had the Civic Si, and I found myself driving the Civic Si more just because I thought it was a little bit more fun. And those fun-to-drive characteristics have translated so well here into the Integra. This six-speed manual transmission is so easy to shift. It's got short throws. You've got the rev matching system from the Honda Civic Type R, which is awesome. It doesn't make you a loser. Stop pretending like you're such an expert and that you'd rather do the extra work in heel and toe when shifting. Rev matching is great. It makes you move faster and it makes it very easy to drive. Now, if you care about handling, the manual transmission is definitely the one you want to go for because that's the one that comes with the limited slip differential. The CVT automatic doesn't get it. And plus, CVTs are just boring. If you want to have fun driving, learn how to drive a manual. And Honda and Acura's manual transmissions are really, really easy to learn on. As for ride quality, I think this is pretty comfortable. It's not that stiff at all, even though Acura says that this is 2% stiffer than the Civic Sedan and 5% stiffer than the Civic Hatchback, but it's actually pretty comfortable to me. No matter what drive mode you're in, you can circle through normal sport and comfort in comfort mode. It just cruises along just fine. And when you pop it into normal or sport, it comes to life a little bit. Now, I will mention that this cabin is actually pretty quiet. You don't hear too much noise from the outside world. The noise that you're hearing in the background, I've been driving on concrete roads all day, haven't had a smooth road at all to drive on. So that's what you're hearing. But other than that, this cabin is pretty quiet. Could Acura have thrown more power into this thing? Sure, but why? Even the cars that the Integra competes with, like the CLA 250, only makes 221 horsepower. Not to mention the Audi A3 makes only one more horsepower for a total of 201. So yeah, I'm not complaining. And don't forget, none of those German competitors, not even the 2 Series Grand Coupe, offer a manual transmission like the Integra. And not to mention, they cost about nine to $10,000 more than the Integra. According to Acura, about 65% of the initial reservations for the Integra have been with the manual transmission, which is pretty awesome. As for the Civic Si versus the Integra, do I recommend upgrading to the Integra? Yes, I definitely do. Again, I felt like the Civic Si lacked a lot of the content that you have here, even in the base Integra. For an extra $3,300, you get a lot more, including the digital gauge cluster display, heated seats, dual zone climate control, and more. Not to mention this as a hatchback is more useful and looks a lot better than the Civic Si sedan. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and on Tickety Talk. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. Downshift rev match. It's awesome. Rev matching is great. I cannot wait for the Integra Type R or the Integra Type S. I was about to say Civic Type R. I can't wait for that either, but the Integra Type R or Type S will be awesome.